Okay, I, I think this is a question where I should spend enough time um, just working through the question carefully, uh, both uh, explaining the correct answers and explaining the wrong answers, exactly how they are wrong. And uh, because the arrangement of a multiple answer question like this is that, um, that one, there's a lot of different combinations <laughs> that would uh, uh, result in the, the fully, or uh, there's, you know, a many more possible combination of answers than multiple choice. That's one. And um, two, I think uh, there's um, more room for deeper understanding and just uh, picking the right answer. So uh, the first part, it's asking choose all choices that demonstrate everyday examples of transport of heat by convection. And so that's the keyword. And the main important thing is to understand the mechanisms of heat transfer. And that's something we would probably spend more time on in a physics or chemistry class. Um, in this class, we will focus mostly on the um, mostly on the uh, mechanisms that are relevant in the context of astronomy uh, in this in the in this particular situation it happens to be convection and uh, radiation so we will uh, stick to those so so in this section you know which isn't really a section about uh, mechanisms of heat transfer they will mention uh, how heat transfer is occurring within the sun. And to be complete, they do tell you what conduction is. And um, they do uh, go more, uh, or uh, and they do briefly explain what convection is and what uh, radiation is. And I don't think, yeah, within this, they don't quite, uh, give you the uh, like a br whole breadth of examples. Um, I think, um, let me see if uh, uh, FAT simulation has heat transfer as one of the simulations. If not, there's a textbook section I can find and use. Uh, textbook, that's not our textbook, but a different classes textbook. Uh, thermal. Yeah, they don't have, I have seen that before and I'm pretty sure that's not mechanisms of heat transfer. So I'll just go to uh, the, <laughs> the textbook I use for physics 10. So um, within the textbook, there should be a, an actual uh, mechanisms of a heat transfer section that would uh, uh, fully uh, that would give a more uh, um, concrete set of examples. So it transfer methods. So, um, so this is a, a, a more fully fleshed out explanation of convection and radiation. And in terms of uh, uh, definition, it's uh, your textbook is more or less complete. It's, you know, you can describe it in one sentence. Uh, what I'm, what I want to give more example of is, uh, well, <laughs> example like this one. So, so this is a good example where heat transfer occurs by really uh, all three methods and how those three methods uh, transfer heat. There are distinct characteristics you can look for. So uh, conduction, uh, so let me ignore the conduction one, which is just the uh, heat transfer by things touching, solid materials touching. And um, talk a little bit about radiation and convection. Really the biggest uh, distinguished thing about radiation and convection is whether uh, real, not real, uh, real, whether a physical material is moving as the heat is transferred. So radiation happens by line of sight. Uh, what carries the heat in radiation is electromagnetic wave, the light itself. Um, in fact, the infrared radiation is normally what we associate with the heat transfer by radiation. 
And so it happens by line of sight. If you block the line of sight, then the heat won't uh, transfer by radiation anymore. So, so that's the most uh, distinguishing feature of radiation. Uh, whoever is um, able to see this uh, fireplace will receive some amount of heat transfer by uh, the infrared radiation. And the heat transfer by convection, you can uh, it it will always involve movement of actual material, movement of gas or sometimes liquid, or uh, we combine them, we call them fluids. So um, sometimes there are specific arrangements you need for convection to happen. Um, the typical arrangement is that you are heating something from the bottom, which causes the gas to expand. The expanded gas is now less dense, so it rises. That's what this rising air is showing. That reduces pressure here, so the cooler gas comes in, it gets heated, so rises again. So the fireplace is placed in such a way to derive convection through this room. And uh, and that, although I guess this is doing it wrong, um, <laughs> if the hot air is going out and cool air is coming in, it's not hitting the room at all. Um, but anyways, um, so this is a more fuller example of heat transfer by radiation and convection. And um, and uh, I guess, yeah. <laughs> so, so with that in mind, let's go through the options that are in this question. Um, and each time I'm thinking of, so here it's asking for convection. So I'm thinking of, is there actual movement of material that is driven by a heat transfer? So I look at the handle of a metal spoon heats up as you stir a cup of hot coffee. Um, and so the handle itself was, it's not moving around. So this is not heat transfer by convection. This should be heat transfer by conduction. In fact, I think I got this example from your textbook section. Um, how they are rises from a fireplace. That's the exact example that you saw. And this also happens to be example from the textbook. Um, water heated at the bottom of the pot rises to the top. So this is a common example in cooking. You heat pots from bottom um, and, and, and you might have seen actual movement of water if you look at the boiling or a uh, before it starts to boil uh, the pot of water, you might see the movement of water. So even though you're applying heat only at the bottom, the water at the top also gets heated through the movement of water. So that's by convection. Um, and so, okay, uh, your hand feels warm as you put your hand next to the coils of an electric heater. And I think what I want to read, oh wait, wait, but this is for convection. So <laughs> here, so you can arguably say there could be some convection involved if there's a movement of get air from the electric heater to your hand. Uh, but the way it's phrased, and because I wrote it, 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 and I think this is actually an example from your textbook where your textbook, yeah, yeah, yeah your hand close to coils of electric heat. So, so, okay, that's radiation, not convection. So I'm not gonna check that. Differential heating of land and water uh, drives local wind patterns. Um, okay, it's talking about wind. So it's talking about movement of air. And I guess uh, I'm debating if I want to go into full explanation of it. The answer is yes, this is an example of convection and um, it has to do with the uh, you know hot air rising from the the hotter part of the land or water. It depends on if it's day or night. Sometimes we call this microclimate, and um, how part of what drives our climate uh, patterns is uh, convection. So and it's through it's a, as wind blows, it's transferring heat from one uh, part to the other. So okay. Um, in the early morning, uh, stepping on cold tile on bathroom floor feels colder than stepping on cold carpet. Um, without, this is a bit too roundabout, but even if you didn't immediately peg it as a conduction, I think you can get that. This doesn't involve any movement of material. So it's whatever it is, it's definitely not convection. 
uh, let me do radiation. Um, so with the radiation, again, what I want you to keep in mind is that it's a transfer of heat by light. So you need a line of sight and um, there has to be a form of light, electromagnetic wave involved. Um, so it says, your face feels very warm as you sit next to a campfire, okay? That could be convection or radiation. And then it says, and quickly feels cooler when it when you put your hand between your face and the campfire. So that's definitely radiation. Uh, if it's convection, then you know you'd have to block the airflow. So this is radiation. Uh, when you wear a darker colored head outside on a sunny day, the head gets warmer more quickly. And this gets a little bit into something that we didn't go into, something called the black body ideal absorber of radiation. But I, I think uh, what I'm hoping you would at least identify with is having that experience. Um, and if you're dark haired like me, then and you're out in the sun, then it's your hair that actually gets hot <laughs> more quickly than your skin. Um, and and that heating occurred through direct ex exposure to sunlight, and that's a heat transfer by radiation, uh, radiation being the sunlight. Uh, hot air rises from a fireplace that was convection. The handle of metal spoon hits up that was conduction in early morning. Um, so since uh, it um, it involves touching, it's a, it, um, when it start when it involves touching, then it uh, radiation is something. Then radiation is not the most significant thing. So I'm gonna not say it's this. Your hand feels warm as you put your hand next to the coals of an electric heater. That was the one of the examples from your textbook so, as over radiation. So so that should be it. Um, so um, to briefly summarize, when you um, go through all these examples of um, examples of uh, mechanisms of a heat transfer. So all these ones that I checked, they are all by uh, they are all by convection. And the ones I didn't check, this was by conduction, radiation and conduction again. And here, the three that I checked are by radiation. And one of the choices were from above. And this is by convection, same choice as one of the choices above. This was by conduction and uh, by conduction again. And you know this is something that we might spend more time on, you know, physics class, <laughs> and I did <laughs> right now, um, uh, for the purpose of how we are trying to understand the the model of our sun. I think one thing that's important to understand is that heat transfer by radiation doesn't involve movement of material. It um, so when you look at the sun here in this solar interior where there's a heat transfer by radiation, not convection. Uh, all these materials, they are not really being stirred around as much. Once you are out here in the convection zone, then the materials are being moved around. Um, so that, that distinction is uh, good to understand to know why the core of the sun could run out of helium even before the, um, the outer parts of the sun runs out of helium. Okay, um, oh yeah, <laughs> so <laughs> the question four was directly priming you for question five, or at least it was supposed to. Um, it says, choose the two statements below, which correctly describe ways that energy travels through the sun. And the hint tells you to read about it here. And when you do, uh, the two statements that you will find is that, um, so this uh, is not true. Uh, heat generated, generated in the core out to some distance that has to travel by radiation. And your textbook gives a reason why that, uh, and the slides do too, that 
um, in the conditions in, in the central part of the sun, the density of the material falls more quickly than the, the temperature um, temperature falls. So the, the heated material, it doesn't expand enough. It doesn't get lighter enough to be able to rise. So from the core out to some distance, it has to be heat transfer by radiation. Once you are out in the outer layers of the sun, that's where the density begins to follow for more, uh, the, the, where the, the temperature begins to follow for more quickly and, and the heated material will be light enough to rise. And that is described here, I think, yeah, rising columns of a hot gas transfer the heat. So the heat transfer happens more quickly in these outer layers because in addition to the radiation, they now have convection layer. Yeah. And the fact that in the core of the sun, convection doesn't happen is um, why you will see some of what you will see in the next few couple of modules. <laughs>